This is a skateboard mold. And if you've seen some of my mold or mold making videos, you might notice that this looks a little different and doesn't have Sharpie lines showing where the geometry is. And that's because I did not make this the same way I normally make a mold. This mold was made on a three axis CNC router. And this mold was designed using a new version of SkateCAD that's now on the open source board's website, specifically for designing one sided molds. A CNC router is a machine that automatically cuts away at a material using a 3D model that you create. It's kind of like a 3D printer, except instead of adding material, it removes material from a block, like a block of foam. So I'm gonna show you how I did this in this next clip, where I'll do a little voiceover and show you the screen and some of the process. Here is the current Open Source Skateboards website homepage. And I'll show you how to get to the new SkateCAD tool from this page. First, you'll click on Build. And then you will click on DIY. And this takes you to the Board Building Resources page. And you will then click on SkateCAD-Mold. And this is the page. So. I'll kind of walk through what's going on. It looks maybe a little bit familiar to, to uh, SkateCAD, but there are some differences. So first off, there's this box here to the left side. This is the parameters box. So this is where you're going to be doing pretty much all of your customization. And the first option on here is mold width. And I'll also mention the other two while I mention the width. So there's width, length, and height. And you can think of this as the size of the blank that you'll be making the skateboard mold from, assuming you're carving a mold out of foam or wood or some other material. So the mold width is the length across the short direction, the length is the length across the long direction, and the height is the depth or the thickness of the mold. Next is the wheelbase, and that is the distance between the innermost truck holes. And if you need to see exactly what that is referencing and all of these, you can click on this little help button and that will open up the reference guide, which has, it looks, it looks like there's a lot of information on here and there is, but when you actually look at it, hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. So you can see the wheelbase is the center of this hole to the center of this hole. And moving next, we have concave radius and this you can actually calculate with a calculator on that same DIY page that I got to this from. You can enter in your skateboard width and the depth of a drop that you want in concave. So from the center of your board to the outer edges of the board, how much drop you'd like. And that will tell you what the concave radius is for a radial concave board. Next there is the nose transition length and the tail transition length. And those are the lengths from where the board goes from having just a normal, I guess you could say concave, to where the kick begins. So you can see there's this sort of like an S curve here. The longer you make this, the longer the S curve will be. And I'll edit all these in a minute just to show you what it looks like when we change everything. Extend tail. This is kind of a weird parameter, but there are some cases where you might have a limited size mold blank that you're starting from, and you want a board with a longer nose than tail. What this would do is shift 
all of your contours towards the nose of the board, making your tail a little bit longer and your nose shorter. And I'll actually demonstrate that one real quick right now. So if I change this to two and click on the update button, you'll see how this changed. So that's what that does. It just shifted the contours to the right. So I'm gonna stick that back to zero, but I'll update it in a minute. Okay, and then the last set of parameters are the kick nose angles, or the, sorry, the kick nose and kick tail angles, which are the same as they were in SkateCAD, so the angle of your kicks, and then the nose and tail radius, which is this curve right here, how sharp that curve is. The bigger the radius, the shallower or the mellower that curve will be. So let's go ahead and change some of these. I'm gonna use these blank size, the mold size dimensions the same, because this is the size of the blanks that I typically use. But let's say I want a 15 inch wheelbase, Maybe I want a more mellow board that has a 30 inch radius. Maybe I want to give it a weird uh, transition length. Like maybe I want to make the nose transition length mellower and the tail transition length tighter for some reason. I can do that, so I'm gonna. <laughs> and let's make it a mellower kick nose and we can keep the kick tail the same. And then I'll also mellow out the nose radius so it's more rounded and click on update. And this is the new shape. So once you play around with this and are ready to do something with this and give it to a CNC machine potentially to make or a 3D printer or some other sort of digital fabrication device. Right here, there is a button that says generate STL. So you click on that and the little pop-up asks you if you are willing to donate to this free tool. So you can click on that and it's just a PayPal link Otherwise, you can click on Download STL and you could save the file. And you've now got your downloaded 3D model, which I'll open in another software. But I wanted to show you one more thing before we leave this page, which is this little side button. If I refresh the page, you'll notice, and you might have seen this, it kind of starts out open. This side window and then it goes and hides to the right side but you can unhide it by clicking this button this is the source code for the parametric model and you probably won't need to play around with this but if you feel like diving in and doing more customization than these parameters on the left allow you can go in and edit this and reload your your script so that you maybe have more parameters or can change some things that you don't like. For example, if you don't like that there is a one inch distance between where the trucks start and where the kick tail or kicks start, you can edit that. Um, and that's somewhere in here. And if you're wondering how this all works, Right here, there is a reference to OpenJSCAD, OpenJSCAD. It's a JavaScript-based 3D modeling software for the browser. So if you do a Google search for OpenJSCAD, or I think it's just OpenJSCAD.org, you can find the user guide or even just look here and see what all the controls are for updating the code on the right and playing around. It's a really cool tool, but let's get back to the skateboard mold.
So I'm going to switch over to show you a little bit about how I created the toolpath for this mold and show you what it looked like running on the CNC machine. Next, you will need some sort of cam software to import your 3D model and generate G-code with for the machine. And I'm using vCarve, but I'm not going to go into detail about what the settings are because this is going to vary based on your machine and what material you're using and some other factors. But what I'm doing is selecting my bits, setting the speed and feed rate for the machine, and simulating what the toolpaths are. And I do two cuts. I do a roughing cut to remove a lot of material, and then I create a finishing cut to smooth the mold out. The other nice thing about this software is it can give you a time estimate so you'll know how long it will take you to make. It was really nice that it actually took less time than I was expecting. I did have to slow down the machine a little bit at some point, so it took a little longer than it was estimated in the software. But overall, it was pretty smooth and the mold came out really nice. You might notice this mold has some little rib lines and edges in the surface of it. And this is not because of the machine or an issue with the machine. This is actually something that's in the 3D model and you may or may not have noticed that also in the SkateCAD model. And that's just because of the way those lines are there because of how the geometry is created in that modeling tool. Now, even though it doesn't look perfect for a foam mold, I'm expecting it to not have any issue because the foam is a little bit soft. So when you compress the wood against it, I'm expecting that to all get compressed smooth and the wood will come out without those rib lines in it. This might be more of an issue if you plan on using these models for a wood mold, but you may be able to get around the imperfections if you put some sort of cork on the surface of the mold, or maybe you can sand it down. I'm not totally sure. I haven't made a wood mold with this tool yet, but it was primarily designed for working with foam molds and using those molds in vacuum bags like the Roar Rocket vacuum bagging kit. You can start using the tool now. It is on the Open Source Board's website and let me know what you make with it, how you're using it. I'd really like to see what you're doing with it. And you can share all that on the forums, which are on the website as well. Have fun with it, be safe, and happy board building.